Mrs. Pro, Mrs. and up until today's 10 years, and they are doing absolutely nothing. In London is Martin Plout, Senior Research Fellow of the Institute of Commonwealth Studies at the University of London. Martin, welcome to the programme. Has there been a cover-up about what happened at Marikana? I mean, we even see pictures and can identify the faces of police officers holding weapons. Possibly more importantly, might be who actually ordered the shootings. I completely agree with you. I mean, the, the police officers, frankly, were carrying out the instructions they were, they were given. And yes, there, there has been no prosecution of them. But the much bigger question is about Cyril Ramaphosa, who intervened directly in the strike. He uh, sent messages to senior police officers asking them to act. He didn't say how they should act, but he encouraged them to do so. And as a, a very senior person in the ANC and as a director of Lonmin, uh, you can imagine the pressure that was on them to do so. Yeah, what does that say about South Africa's economy, its relationship with international companies, Longman, a British company, in terms of the relationship that the country and its economy has and the business people have with their workers? Well, it, it, it's, it shows that things have not changed enormously in South Africa. But the, the particular uh, mind that, the, that this, these group of minds that this happened on I've actually been down those mines. I know the area. Uh, and it is an extraordinary place because uh, unlike anywhere else in South Africa, even during the apartheid period, it was owned by the black people who lived in the area. The tribe that lived in the area owned the mines. And that was why they refused. They had bought the mines from the state before the platinum was discovered. When it was discovered, the mines were built. And as people then began to come from outside the area, the local people said, hang on, you can't, you must live in hostels, you can't live outside the hostels. And some of the worst squatter camps in South Africa existed outside the hostels because people wanted to bring their families or wanted to bring uh, their, their local wives with them. So it's a really, really complicated story. And, uh, you know, the, the, some of the local people made huge months of money out of, out of these mines, as well as Lonro. So it is a really difficult one to untangle where the responsibility lies for any of this. And what about uh, proper accountability 10 years later? Have people like you given up on it while the families continue to fight? Well, you know, yeah, I work mostly on the Horn of Africa now, uh, uh, although I work on South Africa as well. Uh, I mean, I, th there's been a huge amount of uh, publicity about this, and the, the local uh, miners today are calling on Cyril Ramaphosa to come to the mine. They're saying there's going to be a strike at the mine today. They're calling on our miners not to go down the pits today. And they're saying that Cyril Ramaphosa must come and be and apologize, and they must be held accountable. And that is where, where, the, where the struggle really is. But, I mean, quite frankly, the idea that Cyril Ramaphosa is going to be held accountable, I think, is pretty far-fetched. Uh, now, just to return to the issue of the relationship between business and uh, workers, have things changed at all in terms of how the unions relate to their bosses? I've heard of hits being put out on union leaders. No, that is true. But I'm afraid South Africa is an appallingly, uh, you know, violent place. I mean, there was one mistake in your, in your report, which was this is the most uh, violent, uh, uh, you know, confrontation since the end of apartheid. I'm afraid the worst uh, uh, confrontation was last year when, uh, you know, Jacob Zuma frankly called out people in KwaZulu-Natal, and 200 people were killed in the in, in ensuing violence. So I'm afraid South Africa is an appallingly, uh, you know, violent place. And, you know, the, the, the problem for the police is that they are always understaffed. They, uh, they, ha they are armed with uh, high-velocity rifles, and three of their people had been, or two or three of their people had been killed before the strike began. So you can imagine how concerned they were in, in these circumstances. And some of the miners actually... 10 years ago, were actually armed. So you know, there are, it, is, it is a really, really difficult story. This is not a simple, uh, a simple story that, that can easily be summarized in, in, in a quick interview. Uh, but one thing is for sure, uh, the, the, uh, the ordinary workers in South Africa still are poorly paid on the whole, although the, actually the Marikana miners are relatively well paid, but the, uh, there is vast unemployment. I mean, if you are a young person in South Africa, you have less than a 50% chance of having a job, and there is no uh, basic uh, you know, unemployment place. So people are in deep, deep poverty, and the real problem at the end of the day is lack of growth.
South Africa has failed to grow for at least the last 10 years in, in any meaningful way. Unemployment rises all the time and people are trapped in poverty. And that is really where we are now. And it is, it is such a sad story. Martin, you always do a wonderful job explaining complicated stories to us. Really appreciate it. Martin Plout in London. Pleasure.